When have you last seen a brand, a big YouTuber, or any promotional ad not have a fancy looking video with the use of motion graphics and animation? I, for one, cannot remember. It's only natural that these two are in demand. You can really make a great and significant change to your video for a cost that doesn't break the bank. With that said, let's compare between two of the most popular graphic motion and animation software out there, After Effects and Apple Motion. If you want to learn 2D animation, I recommend taking a look at CG Spectrum, which is one of the best online game development, VFX and animation schools. They offer a more personalized education experience, and unlike other online schools, CG Spectrum follows a more hands-on approach with a lot of activities and weekly Q&A calls with instructors who have many years of experience working in the industry. So you will have the support and professional feedback you will need to get yourself industry ready, not to mention a thriving community of students just like you. Through the whole journey, your mentors will guide you through learning both modern and traditional animation techniques with multiple sessions a week. And they have two types of courses in CG Spectrum, 4-month courses and a 12-month diploma. The curriculum is well structured to make you job ready. So if you are interested in animation and open to new doors for yourself in the industry, check out the link in the description of this video. Let's get to know these two guys on a surface level. Wow, we kinda sound shallow. Anyways. After Effects, by far, is the most popular guy. Sorry, Motion. Apple and its products are quite popular, but nothing beats After Effects and especially in the art scene. After Effects is a software of Adobe. It's a motion graphics, compositing, and visual effects software. It's available on Windows and Mac OS. This behemoth of a software would cost you about $53 a month as part of an Adobe bundle called Creative Cloud that includes all of the software that Adobe offers, such as Photoshop and Adobe Animate. However, After Effects alone would cost you around $21 a month. Motion is a software developed by Apple. It's a motion graphics, compositing, visual effects, and titling software. Motion is available exclusively on Mac OS, which is to be expected as Apple is known for making software to complement their ecosystem, which might be why the software isn't as popular as its Adobe counterpart. Okay, what about the price? Well, the software costs about $50, and it's a one-time purchase, not part of any subscription plan. You can think of this software as a complement to Final Cut Pro. You can use it, for example, to make fluid transitions and titles for your videos. Now that we have an idea on what these software are, let's take a look at their interfaces, what they can do, and how that works. After Effects is very similar to its siblings, Photoshop, Adobe Animate, and so on and so forth. Long story short, the software's toolbar is on the top. It has the composition window, which is also the viewer, in the dead center, the project panel on the left, timeline on the bottom center, layers panel on the bottom left, and on the right, you will find a miscellaneous panel. It has a variety of panels that you can choose from. The workspace is quite adjustable in a way that lets you choose whichever workspace setup you are most comfortable with. The project panel is going to be the place where you have all of your assets set up and ready to use, whether audio, video, or photo assets. You can enter your assets into the program several ways, but the easiest way is to just drag and drop. Then you can drag them from the project panel straight to your layers panel to have them organized and composed the way you would like them to be. The viewer or the composition window is the one that will help you visualize how everything will look like post-production. The timeline is your buddy for organizing when things start happening, the fades in and outs and such. Finally, remember the miscellaneous panel? That would be the one to go to work on different elements. Let's say you want to add an effect or a preset. All you would have to do is to drag it from the panel and drop it, and bam, 
In terms of getting to the actual work of compositing, After Effects has a variety of tools. For instance, you have your shape tool, pen tool, mask tool, camera, pre-comps, and a variety of blending modes, all of which are essential in this creative process and that can be used in a plethora of ways. The tools available in After Effects are almost endless, so you can imagine that the possibilities of using this software mixed and mashed with a creative mind can result in mind-blowing things. Dark, sleek, and minimal is this software's anthem. Motion is quite reminiscent of After Effects in its user interface and general look and feel. When you open a new project, you're met with a panel on the far left with three tabs, one for the library, the other for browsing your files, which appears to be removed from newer updates. So, whoops. <laughs> and one for the inspector. Right next to it is another panel with three main tabs, one for layers, one for audio, and one for media. On the right hand side is the viewer, that's where you'll see your work pop up. And lastly, but most importantly, at the bottom you have your timeline. The panel placement for this software can be switched between the classic one or the cinema one. The former is the one we just described, just like After Effects, you would go on the left panel to browse the assets that you're going to use in your project, and then drag them to the layer panel next to it, so as to start working on them, and adding them to whatever you're working on. The library tab in this panel is where you'll be getting your fonts, generators, shapes, filters, particle emitters, and replicators, and many many more. As for the inspector tab, for instance, it's kind of a transformation tool for your assets. You can mess with them and change them any way you want. In the inspector tab itself, you'll find tabs as well. Behaviors, properties, filters, shape, all of which offer adjustable options. Another great and essential tool is the text tool. All the tabs mentioned before, like behaviors, properties, filters, can be used on the text you enter to adjust it to your liking. The ability to bounce back and forth between 2D and 3D layering and options really take this software to a whole new level, and is yet another amazing tool in the software. Just like After Effects, Motion is a sea of amazing tools and options that you can use to create great things. Your limit is the sky. These two software are great tools for your project, and we saw in the last segment they have quite the arsenal of tools and options, so it's only natural that they are fully equipped, which results, naturally so, in, um, for lack of a better word, full software. This happens to be the case for both of them, as they're not your run-of-the-mill effect software. By extension, and to be frank, depending on your prior experience, they would both have you looking at YouTube to understand their basic functionality. Again, if you have previous experience under your belt, this might not be the case, and even better if you come from motion and want to migrate to After Effects, or the opposite, that works too. What's quite reassuring is the fact that both software have thousands upon thousands of YouTube videos in all shapes and forms ready to help you with both of them. Cheer up, folks! Okie dokie, so who wins? Well, if you're a long-time Windows user, Motion won't be the one for you, as it's a Mac OS exclusive. Despite the fact that it's quite professional and has it great on the price point, especially in comparison to After Effects, the fact that it's a Mac OS exclusive can be a turnoff for so many people, especially if you love your precious little Windows machine. Adobe's After Effects, on the other hand, can be quite the awesome tool, but boy oh boy, is that subscription plan quite the turnoff. There's not a single doubt in the greatness of the software, however, the price point of it can be quite the challenge. The two software are great and powerful in their own right, however, it all depends on where you are financially and what system you already own and are comfortable with. 
We have reached the end of our video. We hope our overview and comparison of these two great software has given you enough information to quench your thirst and perhaps help you decide which one is the best fit for you. We sure hope. Make sure to check our other videos for more comparisons like this. Comment below if you think that we've missed something or if you have any other suggestions. Thank you for watching as always and see you next time.